Hi, I'm Chef Laura, and right now we are going to be making our sheet pan Cornish hen dinner. Delicious, lots of vegetables, and also actually a very easy meal as well. So the first thing we're going to do is preheat our oven to 500. So make sure you get that done before you get started. And then um, I would go ahead and prep our vegetables. So I have most of the vegetables already prepped, but we're gonna go ahead and just do a potato here. I like to leave the skin on my potatoes. Skin, the potato skin is actually nutritious and it has fiber and um, I like it. If you don't, you can go ahead and peel your potatoes. I am gonna just trim the ends off just a little bit. And then we're going to slice these into nice thick slices. So our chicken pan dinner is going to cook for 35 to 45 minutes at 500 degrees to, so that we make sure that we get our Cornish hens cooked all the way through. So you need your vegetables to be pretty good size so that they don't overcook. And the recipe calls for four potatoes, which is what we've done here. This serves four people. If that's too many potatoes for your family, just go ahead and use less. But we like potatoes, so we're using all four of them. And I am going to just get some gloves on here because I'm going to be touching some raw chicken. All right, so I'm going to just get my vegetables on here. And if you have a lot of vegetables like I do, and you don't have room on your pan for all of them, you can get another pan and just do a pan of vegetables. They'll cook a little bit faster. So we just wanna keep an eye on them in the oven. But I'm gonna go ahead and like I said, I'm gonna do all the potatoes. This is one onion cut into large, nice thick slices. Again, we want nice big pieces. Let's go ahead and start with that. So we, again, I don't want to overflow my pan here. And then I've got a green pepper and a red pepper and some carrots. So not only is this going to be beautiful with all of these colors, it's also very nutritious. One of the things in nutrition that we talk about is eating the rainbow because every color of vegetable has different nutrients. So if you eat lots of different colors, it's very, very good for you. Second to last are some mushrooms and green beans. Again, you can use whatever vegetables you like, your family likes. And I think once these are spread out on the, the pan, we're gonna be great. So some beautiful fresh green beans. Again, I left them kind of large because I don't want them to overcook when we put this in the oven. Now I'm going to get our our little Cornish hens ready. And I've got some fresh garlic, some fresh herbs, some spices, all kinds of wonderful things going on here. So in order to get the, the garlic out of the little papery uh, skin, I give it just a little whack. If you're going to smash the garlic, you can really smash it and then the paper will just come right off. I'm going to, um, actually I can't do that, just a little bit more. And what that does is it releases this right off of that garlic clove, makes it so much easier to get that paper off. And I'm just gonna cut this little stem end off. That's a little chewy. I'm just gonna chop this down. And I'm gonna put this fresh garlic in with my butter and herbs that we're going to put under the skin of our Cornish green hens. It's gonna be delicious. And you can go as small as you want to with your garlic, holding down the end of your knife and just running it through is the fastest, most efficient way to do it. Use that curve of your knife to your advantage. It's very efficient and it's also quiet. All right, so I'm gonna put that in. I have two tablespoons of butter and I have a about a teaspoon and a half of Italian seasoning in here. And we're just gonna mix all of that together. Okay. 
And then before we get that going, because I'm going to put my hands on the cutting board and I want to get everything done before that. Don't want to contaminate my food with raw poultry. We've got some fresh thyme and some fresh rosemary. I'm going to use the thyme. Uh, just going to put a sprig of each in with our vegetables to just give it some extra flavor, but I'm also going to put a little bit inside the little game hens themselves. Again, all about the flavor. You want to layer this flavor. You want to put it on everything that you're cooking. Make sure that everything gets flavored well. Now, rosemary is a very strong herb, so we're not going to use too much of that. Even inside the, the little hen, we don't want to use too much. Thyme can use a little bit more because it's, it's not quite so strong. All right, so now I am going to go ahead and move my fresh ingredients and put my little hens on the cutting board. Now they're touching the food here, that's okay because they're all gonna be cooked together. Anything, any potential pathogens are going to be, be cooked right out. So I've rinsed the, the little hens off and um, gotten them and dried them and gotten them ready. So what we're gonna do is on the breast of the, of the little hands, we're going to separate the skin from the meat very, very gently. If you have nails, wearing gloves is a good idea. You don't wanna cut through that skin and make holes in it. You wanna keep it whole. And just be gentle. There's a little bit of tissue there. And then we're gonna take our butter mixture. I'm gonna do both of these. And I'm gonna take the butter mixture. Come on, there we go, beautiful. And we're just going to rub that on here underneath. And what that's going to do is that's going to, of course, give it flavor, all of those wonderful Italian herbs and that garlic, but it's also going to help keep the breast meat, the white meat, moist. So white meat doesn't have as much fat in it as our dark meat does. That's why a lot of people think they like, not think, a lot of people like the flavor of dark meat better because it's a little bit more flavorful. Fat is flavor. So we're going to get that underneath there and that's going to stop, keep, help keep them from drying out as much when it, when it bakes. Go ahead and get all of that used. So it's a tablespoon of bird. So if you're making more than two, you can just use that ratio. Get that all under there. All right, then I am going to have to change my gloves simply because I'm gonna to be touching the olive oil. Now for the outside of the little hens, I've made a rub and this has a teaspoon each of the smoked paprika, salt, onion powder, garlic powder, and a little bit of pepper to taste. So probably about a quarter of a teaspoon in this one. And then I am going to just put a little bit of olive oil in here and make a paste. Get some gloves back on again. I'm gonna keep a clean hand in case I need more. Yes, I definitely need more olive oil. So I am going to say that this is about two tablespoons. And all you want when you're doing this is to just make a nice paste. You don't want it too runny. And that just makes it easier to rub all over the hands and it also helps it go on a little bit more evenly and the olive oil is also moisture so that helps keep them moist as well and I do this with my Thanksgiving turkeys you can use whatever herbs you like 
the smoked paprika is going to give this a little bit of a smoky flavor and a very, very pretty color as well. So we've got those ready here. And back to our veggies. On the vegetables, looks like I have room for all of the mushrooms, yay. So for the vegetables, we're going to, again, use some olive oil, and it's going to be about a tablespoon. I have a lot of vegetables here, so we're going to use more than a tablespoon. And again, if you feel comfortable, you do not have to measure it. If you do not feel comfortable, go ahead and use a tablespoon measure. I just take it, pour a little bit on here, and then I'm going to give them a sprinkle of all of the seasonings that we've been using so far. Just to make sure everything is good and flavorful. So a little bit of salt. When I season something, and I'm not measuring, if you wanna measure, this is gonna be about a teaspoon. Just give it a good sprinkle. If you have a little bit of food, it'll be a little bit of salt. If you have a lot of food, it'll be a lot of salt. It works well for, it, for your first seasoning. Then a little bit less pepper. Pepper is stronger. This is also freshly ground, so it's got a beautiful flavor and aroma. Again, if you're a pepper lover, you can use a little bit more. We've got our Italian seasoning. So this is a nice big flake Italian seasoning, and I noticed these holes are very small, but it's coming out pretty well, so that's good. And our garlic powder. If you've got the fresh garlic and you would like to use that in your vegetables as well, you can. Now the smoked paprika is pretty strong. I'm going to be light-handed with that, probably about half a teaspoon. And then our onion powder. Just a little bit. We've got some onion in here already. Just give it a little bit of a sprinkle. All right, then I'm going to, I'm going to use my hands because it's the easiest way to do this. And I'm just going to get that all mixed together. Make sure that there's a little bit of, oops, onion down. I'm going to use Make sure that everything's got a little bit of oil on it. You don't have to use a lot of oil because we've got some other moisture going on in here as well. All right, and then the last thing that I'm gonna do is put a wedge of lemon and some of our fresh herbs inside our hens and get them in this on this pan and in the oven. So when I was defrosting these, these cavities opened up really well. There's plenty of room. I always put fresh herbs in my, when I do a whole, whole poultry, turkey or a roasting a chicken, really gives it a lot of flavor. All right, and then last but not least, after I touched raw, we'll do this. I'll put these on here. Oh. I did say last but not least, but there is one more thing. Let's go ahead and get just a little bit of herbs going with our vegetables as well. These you're gonna take out before you serve, but it is going to, again, help with the flavor. And if you've got some left over and you want, I missed one. If you've got some herbs left over and you want to use them when you plate, that would be very pretty on your platter as well. And let's find the pen that I missed and get our lemon in there. There you go, little guy, you got your lemon. Okay. Then we're going to put a little bit of chicken broth in our pan. Oh, by the way, in this pan, I actually have parchment paper you can use foil or you can oil or spray your pan. Just something so that everything does not stick to it. And we are going to use about a half a cup of chicken broth. Just about that much. 
And that is going to, um, again, flavor. It's also going to moisten the vegetables so that they don't overcook while our hands are cooking. And we are going to make a lovely gravy with it at the end of all of this. So you have a little bit of gravy to go with your game hens. And I do believe that's it. We're gonna get this put in the oven and on to the next recipe. Okay, our Cornish hens are out of the oven and the vegetables are cooked through and everything just looks wonderful and delicious. Now, one thing that you want to do when you are cooking any kind of poultry is you definitely wanna check it with a thermometer to make sure that it is cooked all the way. There's a very small chance that it could have salmonella, but that small chance is enough that we wanna be very, very careful and make sure that we don't make anybody sick. So what you wanna do when you are checking it is you wanna go to a meaty part. Now these are little, little guys, we know that, but you just wanna get your thermometer down into this thigh, make sure that you're not touching a bone and check its temp. And again, we wanna look for 165. And then I always just move it around a little bit, make sure that I've gotten, that I've checked it thoroughly and that it is actually the temperature that it needs to be. So we checked ours. We also tented this with a little bit of foil for the last 15 minutes so that things didn't get over brown. Now, again, if you like crispy vegetables, then you can just leave it, leave it off and, and check it. But I would check it often toward the end just to make sure they're not burning. We have also drained our juices out of the pan and they out of the sheet pan and they are in our saute pan here and I'm going to make a little gravy that you can use that we can use when we eat our our meal. If you don't have a half a cup of drippings left, you can go ahead and just add some some more chicken broth to it to to make that up. We had plenty. We had more than enough. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this to a simmer. And in my little container here, I have half a tablespoon of flour and some cold water. You always wanna use cold water. If you are gluten-free and you can't have flour, uh, cornstarch will work just as well. So I always use cornstarch. And you just, again, that you want the cornstarch, use the same amount, cold water, and get that stirred up so that there isn't any lumps in it. And then after our Drippings come to a simmer, which should be pretty quickly. We're going to just pour our slurry in, let that thicken up a little bit, and we will have some lovely gravy to go with our meal here. All right, it's getting hot. Now you want to make sure that it is simmering because whether you're using flour or cornstarch, you actually want to cook that. Raw flour does not taste good. Oh, now we're really going. Turn that down a little bit. Here we go. So raw flour and raw cornstarch do not taste good. We want to make sure that we get that cooked out. And also with the cornstarch, it has to simmer for a little bit for it to actually thicken. The flour will thicken a little bit faster. And then the other thing that I was just thinking of was, if you want more gravy, just put more chicken stock in here if you have it and make as much as you would like. Have a little lump of flour that I can smash with the back of my spatula or can also strain that out at the end if you happen to have that happen. And then you're just going to make this as thick as you would like it to be. Pour it into a serving dish if you have a gravy boat, that'll work. If not, a bowl, anything. I have been known to even use a measure, a liquid measuring cup. And there we have our beautiful sheet pan dinner with some lovely gravy to go with it. Okay, let's get our little Cornish hen carved for serving. So you just want to go ahead and take off the legs and I'm going to turn it over because it, here I can see the division right here between the leg and the body of the chicken and you're just going to go right around that whole thing with the thigh 
You can feel the joint right here. And when they're cooked, it's just going to come right apart like that. So we've got a beautiful little leg and thigh there. We can do that on the other side. And then if you want to have the wings, you can also do that. It's almost exactly the same way. You're just gonna pop that little bone out of the joint. They're very tiny, but they're still going to be delicious. The wings were my father's favorite part of the chicken because they had the most flavor. Whatever sauce or whatever seasoning was on there, um, he got all of that, that flavor and seasoning. Then for the breast, there is a, a bone, the breast bone that goes down through the, the center, and you just want to get on one side of that and just carefully cut that little breast right off of the ribs and that center bone. And then we can be super fancy if we want to, and we can slice that. Now these cooked upside down, and that does, upside down, meaning the breast side down, um, which keeps them nice and moist and flavorful, but it's not as pretty because the skin is not as crispy. Actually, no, did them both the same way. So if you want that presentation, if you want that crispy skin on the breast, uh, turn it over about halfway through cooking and let that, that crisp up. And there is our serving, our half of our Cornish game hen for our dinner.